So it was October 2015 and I was flicking through one of those upmarket hi-fi magazines on Zinio and came across an advert for this product which promised to add the richness of tubes, as we pronounce them in the UK, to any system for $300. That sounds like just the kind of thing I'd like to try out, I thought. Now, I had some store credit in Amazon, so I had a look how much it was over there. And people were trying to sell it for $560. Forget that, I thought, or words to that effect. But I looked at the reviews underneath it, which were overwhelmingly positive, And one chap suggested you might want to try the Yakin CD3 as an alternative. So I had a look at that. It was a lot cheaper. I ordered it. And it sat in a box for a couple of months until I've finally got around to testing it out now. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that can't get over the idea that people in the UK pronounce the U in the word tube, whereas in the US they say tube. So to get around the whole issue, I'm just going to call them valves from now on and let's be done with it. Now, I know there's going to be quite a few people out there that are wondering, what's the point in this thing again? Well, the idea is your music source device goes into the input. The sound from there travels through the valves. It gets magically imbued with that beautiful, rich valve sound and comes out of the output. It doesn't amplify it, it just makes it sound better. And it's proven, apparently. According to the advertisement for the original device, the one I didn't buy, a university has done an extensive scientific study which proves that having a hi-fi with valves in it will decrease tension and nervousness and increase a sense of well-being by 120%. I mean, who doesn't want that? And that's scientific, so you can't argue with those stats. It's an unfortunate fact that I know if I do a video about any kind of hi-fi device, especially one that has valves in it, the hi-fi experts are going to come out of their anechoic chambers and throw their toys out of the pram. I can just imagine one of them right now saying something like this. You should never introduce any element into the audio signal path that might in some way colour or alter the sound away from the original studio recording. And to that I'd say, have you ever adjusted the bass or treble on any of your devices? Or perhaps press that loudness button or the bass boost button or even adjusted the volume? Because if you have, then you've already adjusted the sound. And what about the speakers you're listening to? Are they like those or perhaps like these or like that or like that? They all sound different in my house. And then what about the room that you're playing them in? Has it got carpet on the floor or has it got a wood floor or is it tiled? And on top of that, has it got wallpaper or is it plain walls? Has it got furnishings in it like curtains and soft settees and things? And then how far are your speakers away from the wall and what are you listening to? Is it a vinyl record, tape or a digital file? All of these things will combine to make the sound in your house different to what it was when it was originally recorded. Just get things sounding how you like. After all, you're supposed to enjoy it. It's an entertainment medium. Now, if you look at the top of the device, you can see some letters and numbers written in white there. Those are the model numbers for the valves that this device will support. So I've gone and got myself some new old stock Sylvania valves, a matching pair, no less. And the reason I did that is because whenever I've seen a review of a device that contains Chinese valves, the first comment that anyone's going to put under it is... You need to replace those with some new old stock valves. So to preempt that, I've gone ahead and done it already. So there you go. Those are the two side by side. Um, I don't know if the other ones would have been good. Maybe they sound fine for all I know, but I don't want to go through that whole rigmarole of doing a review and then someone said, oh, you need some different valves in it. They're going to sound so much better. Well, I've already done it. Oh, look at me. I'm cleaning them off as well. For all those people who believe the urban myth that putting greasy fingerprints on a valve will damage it, I've cleaned them off. It doesn't, but I did it so that you don't have to comment on that either. Now on the back, I can swap it between 110 and 220 volts. So that's fine. And uh, it did come with a power lead with it, of course. And I plugged it in and nothing happened. I thought, oh, this is great. After all these months, I've left it in a box. It doesn't work. No, the thing that didn't work was that lead. What's with the Chinese and the power supplies? They just seem to do really bad ones. Anyway, I swapped it over for what I've already got. It's a standard size plug and it works fine. And of course, you can see the blue light on the front and you can see the valves lit up. That doesn't flash, by the way, at the front. That's just the refresh rate on the camera making it look like that. Those do get very hot. Oh, clean it off. Make sure you do that even though you don't need to. But yeah, they do get very hot. So something's definitely going on there. You couldn't put your finger on that for more than a couple of seconds. Now let's have a look inside it. I know people always like to look in these things. So there you go. That's what you get inside it. You get four of those blue ones. You get two of those black ones. 
and you get another two of these blue ones. So there you go, that was an extensive tour. That's everything I know about electronics, so I might as well put the cover back on again. Oh, and one last polish, because that top part is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Now, I wired this thing up into my hi-fi setup initially with a couple of switch boxes that enabled me to do a simple A-B sound test. I could listen to the sound going through the valve processor and then click it over and listen to it going straight into the amplifier. So I tried a few different sources, vinyl, reel-to-reel, SACDs, lossless FLAC files, and flicking back and forth between the two, there wasn't a massive difference initially, but then I started to realize that I preferred the sound when it went through the valve processor. It's very subtle, but it seems to add a bit more space to the sound. It's a bit like you've got a head cold and then you flick the switch and suddenly your ears pop a little bit and you can hear a little bit more. It just adds an extra kind of distance to the musicians around you. And every time you flick away from it, it feels like everyone's moved in a little bit and it's become more compressed. So the big question is, does my hi-fi sound hundreds of dollars better than it did before? And the answer for me is no, of course it doesn't. It sounds a little bit better. I don't know how it's doing it. It might be snake oil, it might be my imagination, but it definitely doesn't make things sound worse. And since I've already paid for it, it's earned its place in my hi-fi setup. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>